This week I'm too rushed for time to make any puns about bench dogs and bench cats, so that'll have to do. The Wood Knight is sponsored by I Would Like. So there are lots of different ways to drill straight holes for dog holes. If you know exactly where it's all going to fall before you laminate it up, you could just use the drill press. You can use a cordless drill and a sort of handheld guide to keep it straight. You can use two squares, uh, one on each axis and sort of keep it straight like that. You can use the same with a bit and brace. I don't have a bit and brace. I'm going to go with this guide. One, I've already got the guide. Uh, last time I made a workbench, I used this exact same guide to drill the holes and it worked out just fine. Now why did I need a corded drill rather than a cordless drill? On this particular jig it requires a certain diameter collar and on most cordless drills these days they're getting shorter and shorter they don't have that standardized collar. Uh, on here the only spot it could really grab onto would be probably the um, clutch and you don't really want to be grabbing onto that and it's the wrong diameter anyway. Everything else is moving or it's the body. On corded drills, they'll typically have a 43 millimeter collar and this goes across multiple brands and uh, it's used for various jigs like this and uh, there's a lot of uh, turn your corded drill into a drill press with a lever and all that type jigs. And that's typically where the handle for the drill will actually attach to. So that's what this is attaching to. So for stability reasons, I've screwed the guide into a piece of plywood. It gives me a larger reference surface. It also means that I can put a clamp on if I need to. I've also super glued and regular wood glued on a fence. And this actually gives me the uh, depth that I want. So I can't go any further than that, which means that drilling all my dog holes is nice and easy. Now, as you can see, I've actually already drilled one hole. This doesn't go all the way through, but we'll get to that in a little while. Uh, this jig has two holes in it. The first hole is obviously the clearance hole for the drill bit. The second hole is actually for a uh, dowel. In this case, it'll be 19 millimeter dowel, the same as what I'll be using for my bench dogs. And that's so that I can locate it. That's not going anywhere. And that gives me my next advancement. This acts a lot like a shelf pin drilling jig thing. Um, because now I don't have to measure out each increment. So just before we get to actually drilling, I'm using a 19 millimeter Forstner bit. It is a carbide tip one. I'll show that off a little bit more later, but this will not go all the way through the workbench. You've got a few different options. If you can find a 19 mil twist bit, great. Or a bread point would be even better. Bade bit's okay, but can leave a, a lot of mess. If you can find a 19 mil spiral upcut bit, go for it uh, for in a router. They are probably the best way and probably the easiest and quickest way to get a straight hole because of the plunge mechanism of a router, but they're not available in Australia full stop. This is sort of the desired shape for our bench dogs. Uh, I'm just using some dowel I bought from Bunnings or any hardware store. And one of the things you want to note about hardware store bought dowel is that it's not actually all that round. It's often made from wetter wood and often you'll be able to feel how wet it is just on the surface of temperature or feel very cold to the touch. Uh, they're often made from greener wood or just lower quality machining processes. And this particular one had about a plus or minus one mil variance. So at its widest, it was about 20 millimeters and at its narrowest about 18. So meant to be 19 mil or three quarters of an inch. And it, well, wasn't. So it doesn't fit in the hole because it's far too large in some dimension. So what I'm doing at the moment is just taking a couple of passes with a block plane. 
and I just need to reduce the diameter. Now you could do this with a piece of sandpaper, but because this is 19 millimeters, it's a little bit hard to chuck up compared to say six millimeters or you know, something that will actually fit in the chuck. We don't need a smooth texture, so this sort of um, faceted approach will work just fine. I'm doing a few strokes here and there, trying to reduce the majority of it. I've got some uh, pencil on one side so that I know where I've been over. Texture or something like that would work just as well. We want a, well, we don't need a tight or a loose fit. We want sort of a just below friction fit because we're gonna add in these single ball latches or sometimes called bullet latches. And that'll actually provide the uh, friction that'll keep it in position. However, we don't wanna make it too small. So that's enough passes that I can test and go, that's still too tight. Yep, so we're gonna keep working away. Now you can see that I've got one dog there. Uh, if you don't have any dogs or dowels of the right size, uh, just clamp a piece of wood across using the tail vise, butt it up against it, uh, and it makes it really quite easy to plane it. So I'm gonna keep plodding away at this until I get a pretty good fit. So for now, that is all done. I have a dog in every other hole, just about. Uh, ideally, I wanna have one in every hole, but as it turns out, these little bullet latches I bought aren't as good as the ones I've bought in the past. So I'm not gonna provide links because I'm still un I'm unhappy with these, so I don't, don't wanna recommend them. These are supposed to have an eight millimeter uh, stem shaft, whatever you wanna call it, uh, but unfortunately, they are only eight millimeters in parts. So they flare out quite a bit at the bottom, which means that an eight millimeter hole won't suffice. So you go up to the next size and then the flange on the front falls through. So I had been hot gluing them in because that's really all I need so they don't fall in. Then my hot glue gun died. So if you've never built or used a sort of traditional style workbench, you may not actually know what uh, bench dogs are for. They are a form of work holding and they're very quick, easy, uh, piece of holding has incredible amount of power and they're great for doing things like planing. So I've got this between one dog here and the bench dog integrated into the tail vise. If I wanted to just clean up this edge super easy. What if I want to do the other side? Well that's actually a pretty crappy side but this is a scrap after all. Super easy, so very quick, very secure. I've got a stop on either side, these are parallel. I put a stick across there and I've got myself a planing stop. This is more useful for wider and longer pieces, so maybe something that won't fit between a dog and the tail vise, uh, or something that's not necessarily as centered on these. And this is not gonna go anywhere. I plane this direction as I'm right-handed. I've done the same down the other end for my wife as she's left-handed, so that means that she can use a 
planning stop just as well. I know that was a lot of talking, mostly rambling, so if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. Next week, I will be taking a break from the workbench video, but there should be one or two videos, other projects that I need to get done. Uh, follow me on Instagram if you wanna see spoilers for that, I suppose. Then there'll be two videos on the workbench left. One is the leg vice and the final wrap up video, putting all the finishing touches on. So talking about the types of finishes to use, uh, where we need to do edge treatments, that sort of stuff. Anyway, as I said, thank you for watching.